So our next speaker is Peng Fei Li. Um, Peng Fei is a PhD student in environmental psychology at the CUNY Graduate Center. Um, he teaches psychology at New York City College of Technology and graduated from Wuhan University um, with a BA in philosophy. Um, his current research focuses on Beijing suburbanization. I think I will use PowerPoint. <laughs> I, have, I have some pictures to, to, to visualize what's happening in China right now. Urban renewal, massive urban renewal project in China. It happened. It happened in the U.S. in 50s and 60s, in larger scale than gentrification. And so this has happened in U.S. and in Europe in the name of modernity and modernization. But in China too, Chinese government even in Deng Xiaoping, then period, we uh, the state propaganda and advertise the, the whole modernization project to to renew the Chinese cities. So I, I want to bring our talk today with a little bit to the theoretical aspect, the theoretical framework of what happened in the, what is the logic of gentrification, what's, what is the logic of urban renewal project. So in the name of modernity and modernization, the people who are too enchanted to, and motivated by the grand duel of the modernity and anticipated but and realize the happiness of the modernized way of life can do very crazy stuff, right? <laughs> they can destroy their own neighborhood. They can, they can even the whole city. They can absolute their century old social networks, traditions, and values, and, and only to build unfamiliar but new places. And in the in the, in his classic book, all that is sonic melt into air the experience of modernity. Marshall Berman demonstrated, illuminated vividly how demolition and relocation were undertaken in the name of modernity and the process of modernization. It graves not only for the destruction of the traditional institutes and environment, but also for the exact contradiction of modernization. That is, it aims at empowering people, but ends in destroying the vitalities and ensuing acidism. So that's my major theme for today's talk. So, so although this kind of urban renewal project has been criticized a lot in the West, but many Chinese cities are conducting those large-scale urban projects right now. Okay, so I will talk about an an urban renewal, a wholesale urban renewal in the county state of Sui in central China. It is in Hubei province, located in the central part of China. And it was a very small town, was a very small town before 2009, hosting only, only 33,000 population in, in the Chinese context. And in a 92 square mile area, the urban center of the town, this is the urban center, actually it's quite small, it's very dense. It's only 1.5 square area and hosting 30,000 people in this area. So, a new county level government has been founded in, was founded in 2009 by, by elections several nearby towns and tended to rebuild this small town into a county seat to serve the whole region. So the new urban center, they plan, they, they plan to expand the center. The new ex urban center is proposed to accommodate 200,000 people uh, in a 20 square mile area. So mm -hmm. that means 10 times, multiple the city scale and the population 10 times. By urbanizing some of the rural residents in the town, so urbanizing some of the rural residents in the town and attracting more rural migrants from other towns in this region. So after two years of investigation conducted by the county government, this is conducted by the county government, the urban renewal project has been launched in this year from uh, in February. 
to the whole town except the narrow west bank. Ex except a little bit the narrow, uh, the close to the mountain area. That area will be reserved. So all other places will be demolished. Only a few institutions will be re reserved. But however, in, in this through three phases. However, in the first phase, only one only 1,500 households will be uh, eligible for conservation. And also, there are more than, there are 4,000 households will be relocated. Why? I will talk about that later. Okay, so, it, the, the, the soon to be demolished area in the first phase covers more than half of the town and accommodate at least one third of the 30,000 population. However, the, but the, all, the, all those people who are eligible for accommodation are only the homeowners. So all the renters, the next 200 households will not eligible for the, the full range compensation. So we can infer from the public size, the data, we can infer that the, the renters, public housing renters will be treated very unfairly in, in the first phase. However, the government reported nothing about the public housing renters. The same that there's no public housing renters in this town. So from the pub government perspective, it's a, it's a great project. It's a very great project for the residents and the county as a whole. Because the county will become more beautiful. We are more than housing apartments, right? And business street, and more powerful because it will attract more rural population in the nearby towns to go to this city. <laughs> and on the other hand, the old residents, some of the old residents who are homeowners, the, the cluster, right now the government used the term, the cluster rate snobs, cluster snob households district, all in the website and newspapers in the government. So, could you say that the government name for the... The history, you can search. What do you mean? That you said oh, the government uses the name of certain householders. They call them. The they call it the snam, 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 snam. Sorry, snam households, snam household district. The government's proposal is to me theoretically the government's proposal is not only new liberal but also very authoritarian because it, it, it's very new liberal in the several aspects. In the very beginning, the the homeowners and renters have already been treated differently. And secondly, all the new constructed apartment buildings will be commodity housing. Will be a commodity. There's no rental housing in the future. The private housing market will be will put the demolished household, former public renters, and the rural uh, rural population in the surrounding areas in the same monetized situation. The government even dream of a very lucrative housing market in the future and a very flourishing tourist economy in the recent future. Beside this kind of new liberal and, um, characteristics, the, the Renew project is absolutely authoritarian because the residents absolutely have no stakes on the, 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 the decision process of the demolition and relocation. They have to sign the contract. They have to sign the contract and get a limited compensation or they can end up paying nothing. And it's very ironic that one third of the residents, one third of the 1,500 residents has already signed the contract with the government. And, and for the rest, approximately 1,000 households and unpublic unpublicized public housing renters at least including, we have to add four, four more thousand residents, they will eventually, I, I guess, they will eventually cooperate with the renewal project without much resistance. So we can have um, some picture of what the town looks like. The very quite small town in the Chinese standard is serving only 30,000 population. And this is the closer look of the townhouses, the old townhouses in that town center. So the question is, why are the residents are so submissive to the government's renewal project? Do you have a question? Answer it quick. Uh -huh. 
this is this was all of this town is going to be destroyed. Yeah, all of this town will be destroyed. This, this yeah, completely, gonna be completely gone. Yeah, completely gone. And it's already demolition. I have the picture of demolition in Toronto. Okay. So the question is, why are the residents so submissive to, in the government's renewal project? To me, it's, this is the more traditional the residents, the street. So they have these one-story townhouses. Some of the household built two stories townhouses. That's in the Chinese context. And, and it is, to, to me, it is by no means due to the bright future of the supposed to be more than apartment. And it is, last thing is unlikely because of the government is co co so coercive that the residents might be physically hurt by the government. No, the government won't do military pol policing to, to kill or do something. The government won't do that. We won't do that to coercive strategies. The government, to me, it's very tricky here, is the government knows very well that many residents are trapped in their current situation. It's very interesting why they are trapped in their current situation. And they will not be happy with or without the demolition. Because as a small town in China, this is the demolition right now. Right now they are demolished all the old houses. And this is the new housing has already been constructed. I heard that if this um, mid-rise apartment is inconsistent with the new street design, they may demolish this as well. They, they have the financial means to demolish already constructed new housing. So why? Because many residents are in, in that town may be even poorer than the rural residents in that, in that town because there's only a few jobs left in the town. All the people who are urban residents, they go to the coastal cities in China to work. So one, there is definitely no place for the young, enthusiastic adults in town. So in general, a husband, a wife, or both in a family, they will go to a more developed city like Guangzhou, Shanghai, or Beijing to work. And they are busily involved in this kind of larger, new liberalized globalized economy instead of their localized political and economic issues. So those who are left in the town, the, from this picture, this picture I asked a friend you took, you can see that all those people say they are old people. They are old people who are sitting on the street, some old, some old females, and more than 60 years old, 70 years old. And so the, the people who are left in the town are uh, much less power, much less powerful because they either rely on the partners' monthly remittance or the local government's monthly, it called monthly minimum guarantee to survive. So they are disenchanted by the current, by the current living condition and the renewal project. So no matter how promising the government's propaganda sounds, they will never believe that. They don't. They don't think that. It, they think that it is not true. So, however, they won't fight. They won't fight with the collective, collectively either, due to the equally bad possibilities. So, to me, it's hard to imagine. I, I, I will plan to do a dissertation project on this or the similar kind of urban renewal project. That's my plan. To me, it's still very hard to imagine that how the, uh, approximately 10,000 people urban residents in the first renewal phase will, will let their own homes be destroyed at the same time. It's still very hard to understand. And it is impossible to accommodate those homeless people in the country safe now. There is no available, practically speaking, because the existing constructed homes are not enough for the dislocated. I guess maybe they, they have partners or families who work in other cities. So they are renters in other cities, so they don't care. They can come back to, to get a new house after demolished. the government demolishes them and redevelops them. Or on the other, and I, have, I, heard, I heard from some friends and families in this place, they, they speak that some of the dislocated households, they rent a very small housing unit in the rural places, in the countryside, in the villages. This village still has their farmland but they rent a very small part because they are old people who are there. They don't care, they have no job, so they just move there. So however, so in, in conclusion, I think the, in conclusion the renewal project will take place 
if no major protests will occur in the recent future, I mean, in these two years. And so, so maybe and as a modernist project, it has been carried out without completely, completely informed consent. And the county government argues that, even though the county, county government argues that it has already interviewed and considered the residents, re representative opinion, Kelvin, but I don't think the, there's no, I, I have, I've never heard, most of the disrelocated people say that we don't know anything about the plan. We've never seen, they, it's ironic, they never know what the future city will look like. So ironic, they, they are the home, they are the people who live there and they don't know what their city will look like, their future city will look like. So my conclusion is, maybe China has not reached its modern peak yet. It's not modern project at all. Or maybe it is a unique Chinese new liberalism. Or maybe the renew, the urban renewal technology fits perfectly with China's unique pre-modern and authoritarian characteristics in this kind of we're already in a post-industrial, new liberal, and global world. But China still keeps that kind of pre more than authoritarian practice. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and this is the planet house. That's a very traditional housing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's built in Qing Dynasty more than 150 years ago. So there is no um, renewal of the old housing stock, but just demolish and build more than okay. Thank you. <coughs> Near yeah, near Wuhan. It's one hour by train from Wuhan. Which has how many millions? Many, many millions. I mean, the, the country as a whole has, Wuhan. Yeah, Wuhan, Wuhan has nine million, nine million people. Wuhan is a regional large city.